<laughs> Hi, everybody. Nice to have you join us. My name is Jill, and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight, and we're so happy you're joining us for practice. <clears throat> um, depending on when you're joining us uh, in this practice, if you're following us on YouTube, it may not be May, the month of May anymore. Um, at this time that we're recording, it is May 29th. I can't believe it. This month is flying by as are all the days. But um, yeah, so with um, there will be a link down below in the recording if it is still May. And even if it isn't, you can still support this initiative and True North Insight and, and the Dharma that we're trying to continue, that we are continuing to offer. And uh, in particular, there's a fundraising endeavor happening in the month of May, in particular to support our ability to offer scholarships for folks on retreat. So it it adds up and makes a difference, even if it's five dollars ten dollars whatever you can manage if we all do a little bit it helps helps to make the dharma accessible for everyone so check out that link if you're able thank you hmm. so the topic uh, for practice and reflection um tonight is uh, a request and uh, it's one I'm happy to do because I think it's really important and it's something I can relate to and mm, I'm excited to talk about. And uh, in the Dharma, in the Pali language, this uh, quality is called aditana. So for those that like to reference these Pali words, I'll just spell it um, and I'll put it in the link down below. It's A-D-H-I-T-T-H-A-N-A, -T -T aditana. And it means, it means most often translated as determination. It means a decision, making a decision, and or, or a resolution. Self-determination, it's also defined as will, willpower, will. Willpower is an overused term. Uh, resolve, make the resolution or resolve. And um, the first part of that word, many Pali words are compound words. So adi, A-D-H-I, means a movement towards. And I find that helpful <laughs> because we can get mm, kind of in a capitalist mindset of determination that's just going to plow through and power through and get something, get somewhere. And to this part, Adi, a movement towards. It's inclining the heart and mind and energy uh, in a skillful way. Um, mm, and it might not mean that we like get there, get something, which has a flavor of clinging, suffering, but. Um, this this sense of resolution, resolve, and the movement towards that intention. In the imagery or in similes, it's often likened to a, a mountain, a very rocky, solid, steady mountain that is unshaken by the strong winds, the vicissitudes, the winds of life, the, uh, me just throwing poly words in there, vicissitudes, meaning uh, 
Mm. Pleasant and unpleasant, mm. gain and loss, mm. fame and disrepute, these extremes of things that push and pull us all the time and affect us. And so the image of this mountain that is steady amidst the waves of life or the winds of life. <clears throat> and in particular, this quality, Aditana, is referenced in part of the Dharma that's called the paramis or the ten perfections of the heart. And these paramis uh, are considered ways to cross the floods, is how it's termed. The floods represent greed, hatred, and delusion. And the, the, uh, I won't throw more poly, but... Um, so these 10 qualities or perfections of the heart that are that we cultivate and grow and deepen in are ways for us to cross over the floods of wanting and not wanting, liking and not liking, greed, hatred, and delusion, not seeing clearly, not seeing with wisdom, the true nature of things, not seeing clearly the way to freedom. And it is has been said and makes sense to me that this quality determination or aditana is underlies all of the ten perfections or perfections of the heart, these paramis, that all ten uh, all 10 of them require some degree of determination or resolve. Even for us to show up here, when there's an infinite number of other things to be doing, has required some determination and resolve for all of us to be here, including myself. And uh, so to recognize the ways that it really underlies the choices we make and where we put our energy and how we show up in the world. And <laughs> we can have determination that is both skillful and unskillful. So when it's referred to in the paramis, the 10 perfections, this is referring to skillful determination, meaning wholesome, onward leading, liberating intentions and determinations. But if we look at our own, reflect at our, our own lives and choices, we might see times when we've had determination to do things even that are maybe not skillful. It's kind of, it depends. Uh, I. I don't know if I give a lot of credence to uh, birth signs or not, but I'm a Taurus and um, have this bull-like nature. <laughs> Some of you are laughing that know me. And, um, you know, the, so I can also get like just really determined to do something. Like I'm just, I'm going to do it, even if it's not really skillful or wholesome. Just, uh, and even if like people around us may be saying, are you sure you want to do that again? Or <laughs> is that, you know, we may have close friends that are kind of like <laughs> trying to help us inquire, is that skillful? But we can kind of get sometimes just into some determination. No, nope, that's what I want. And that's what I'm going to do or or not do whatever, you know. And so just to understand that we can have determination that is skillful and unskillful. And obviously, we want to cultivate what is skillful. 
Um, and so it might be interesting to look at that for ourselves. Like, hmm, what am I being determined about? What am I cultivating resolve and mm, strong intention around? Yeah, that could be very interesting to look at. In this uh, really excellent book, uh, Sylvia Borstein's book, I'll put the link down below in the YouTube channel. This is a book about the Paramis, and I love her writing and teaching, and it's called Pay Attention for Goodness Sake, this book. Pay attention for goodness sake. And it's practicing the perfections of the heart, the Buddhist path of kindness, and it's about these 10 Paramis. And... I'll be referencing this a lot um, tonight. In this, on uh, the chapter of about determination, um, she she puts each of these ten into a little chart, which is really succinct, and for each one of them, the same aspects, and and it's very. Um, Pithy is the word that comes to mind. It's very uh, to the point. <laughs> so in, in her chart on determination, she says it's the practice, the, the practice of determination develops the habit of persevering. Persevering is another beautiful word for this quality. Persevering. Gosh. I know so many dear people that have have this quality and don't know they do. And it could be just the perseverance to get up and meet another day. For many folks, uh, this requires a, a lot of determination. I'm going to, you know, I was in a, um, supporting a, spousal loss grief group today and and um and some of the folks were just talking about like ah waking up another day and the determination just to put the foot on the floor to get out of the bed and and that's it's immense for lots of folks so it can show up in really subtle ways and very profound ways and um individual ways so it develops a habit of persevering and then she says by this is, so how how do we do this i was chatting with someone today about like and talking about you know how to, how do we get this determination this energy this will to to do whatever is wholesome or onward leading so Sylvia shares by, we develop this by seeing clearly the cause of dukkha. <laughs> so that resolve then will become spontaneous. So let's talk about that a bit more. By seeing clearly the cause of dukkha. So for anyone that's new to the Dharma, dukkha is a... Uh, Another Pali word that that means stress, anxiety, suffering, pain, uh, not being able to get rid of what we don't want, not being able to keep what we do want, discontent, anguish. It's this whole big range of that's part of the human experience unless one is fully enlightened, <laughs> that um, it has a cause and has an ending. <laughs> the Buddha awoke to what's called the Four Noble Truths, the Four Ennobling Truths, the Four Liberating Truths. The first is that there is dukkha, that we experience these 
this range of stresses and tensions and suffering. And then he understood and taught, thankfully, when he realized there's a cause for it. And the cause is not everyone and everything else. <laughs> the cause is not, you know, because we're constantly chasing this. Like if I can get everyone else to behave the way I want them to behave, if I could get everything in my life to a state of comfort and how I want it to be. And then, okay, nobody move. <laughs> nobody say anything to wreck it. Nobody do anything because I've got it now. You know, that we think then we'll have peace. I think we've all found out this is not the case because then we're just on to something else, wanting something else. And also we can't control most, absolutely most, if not all of that. We can't control other people and we can't control all these conditions of life. We can't control aging, sickness, and death, or loss, etc. It's beyond our control. So thinking that, that that would be the ending of suffering is false, is misguided. But there is, an, there is a cause of suffering. It's, and the cause is clinging. Clinging to how we want things to be. Or clinging to how we want things not to be. Clinging to the idea of who we want to be. Et cetera, et cetera. Aversion is the same thing as clinging. Holding on to or pushing away is the same thing. So the Buddha under this is this this um, second noble truth is understanding that there is a cause for for suffering, and if there's a cause for suffer something like uh, any illness that has a direct cause any um you know pain if there's like a pin sticking in my leg and oh there's a cause for that sensation i could remove the pin and that sensation will go away so if we see there's a direct cause for something if we remove it then the suffering is not being fueled and fed so that's the third noble truth there's a cause and there can be an ending of suffering. And the fourth noble truth is the way, the path, the middle path to the, the ending of suffering. Okay, so to backtrack now, mm, determination, aditana, is developed, persevering is developed by seeing clearly the cause of dukkha, clinging so that our resolve to do what is skillful and onward leading becomes spontaneous. The more we see suffering and its ending, the more determination we will grow. And she goes on that this is supported by By validating the truth of this possibility of peace through direct experience and it's consolidated by repeating these experiences. So perseverance is supported by really recognizing when peace is present, when freedom has happened, when letting go has happened, when not fueling, clinging, renunciation or letting go has happened by really turning towards it and recognizing, ah, oh, there's a moment of 
ease, freedom, peace. Through our direct experience, not through reading about it, hearing about it, talking about it, but looking directly at our own lives and turning towards it. Oh, yeah, that has been possible. There have been times. And this is often overlooked and is important to turn towards and look and acknowledge the times when we have felt some freedom from dukkha. And then she goes on that all of this manifests as she uses the word tenacity, <laughs> which is an interesting word, tenacity, is this, this real deter strong determination. So it comes from understanding the Four Noble Truths. Uh, the poet Robert Frost says it this way, first thing I do in the morning is I make my bed, then I make up my mind. That's a great little quote to put on your bedside. <laughs> Robert Frost, first thing in the morning I do is I make my bed, then I make up my mind. So for me, I keep a little quote on my bedside, one that I read or recite um, when I'm going to, to before bed and in the morning of, of determination, of setting my intention for the day, of my resolve, of my intention to be on the path, etc. Waking this morning, I smile. A brand new day is before me. May I live mindfully with compassion, etc. So you you could create your own <laughs> phrase that resonates for you to make up your mind first thing in the morning after you make your bed. <laughs> or you could do it in a different order. Um so this is also related to mm, something that's called sada, which is translated as faith. And it's also one of the paramis. And in, in the Dharma, in, in uh, is sada one of the paramis? Maybe it isn't. I'm just looking at the list. I thought it was. Maybe it isn't. It's an honorary parami. <laughs> I just made it so. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyways, sada, faith. Faith, in this understanding, is more akin to trust, which mean, which comes from recalling, giving attention to, calling up and really remembering in a visceral way, try to feel it in your body, heart, mind, energy, what has felt like the times when you have had determination. When you've had a skillful intention and followed through, how did that feel? And uh, this is the quality of faith, which reminds us this is possible. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is possible for me. I did that. We're so, it's so easy to recall, oh, I didn't do the thing. I didn't do that. I should have done that. I want to do that. You know, we have these endless to-do lists. How often do we acknowledge that happened. I did practice. I did find some nourishing food. I did reach out to that person. I did whatever the thing that is heart connecting with yourself, with the world, with the earth. So it's important that we um, 
direct our attention and recall so that it will fuel faith and trust that this is possible. And this will give energy to the determination to do it again, <laughs> begin again, um, to consolidate it by repeating these skillful practices and experiences. Hmm. Uh, Sylvia Borstein, okay, so, so about that, when we're recalling it, if we feel like that might be helpful for us to really call up and remember that it's possible for us, you might do find it helpful to journal, to have some journal, like, not just a gratitude journal, but like a skillfulness journal journal of recalling hmm, what happened in this day so at the end of the day i look back on the day what did i do with this day this day is now ended my life is shorter that's how that evening gata begins what have i done and and so you know maybe journaling or just taking time to reflect of um to really look at and recall that it's possible for us. All right, Sylvia Borstein says that this way, seeing clearly, choosing wisely, and living fully is a human possibility. This is something she recalls for herself, it's so good. Seeing clearly, meaning seeing with insight, seeing the true nature of things, and then choosing wisely, and loving fully is a human possibility for all of us. For all of us. <laughs> Just in case any loops were going through, yeah, but not me. Um, I'd love to share this. I know it, it's going on a bit long tonight, but... Uh, this is a, just a great story that Sylvia shares. Um, she's she's a, like really accessible writer and and funny, and she shares lots of great anecdotes and stories. So I just really appreciate her. Um, and in this book, she she shares. She was speaking at uh, was it her grandson? Yeah, grandson's sixth grade class that's a hard word to say six she went to his school to talk to them about the buddha and meditation which is already great <laughs> and and so she gave a little teaching and then the kids ask all these excellent questions <laughs> really fun stories um oh so good and the kids are asking these different questions. And so one of them comes to this one. I also heard this same boy continued that people who meditate can walk over hot coals or lie on beds and nails. We lie on beds of nails. We saw pictures of that in our book about India. She says that's true too. Sometimes people concentrate so much that they don't feel pain in the way we usually do. And then he he went on, and that once you met a woman who was such a good meditator that she could walk through walls. Did you? He says, and this is a reference to Deepa Ma, who is another beautiful, important teacher. And she, and so she says, I did, I did meet her, and she was appreciating how polite and persistent this young man was, young boy, in pursuing his point. And so she says, she was old when I met her. She lived in Calcutta, but some of her students were my teachers, brought her to the United States so people could meet her. And and he says, well, did you see her walk through walls? And she says, no, I didn't. But I, she says, I, I thought that if my teacher says she did, then she did. Uh, so he wants to know more about how she did it, and she she gave some answer about um, 
her she was able to concentrate to so carefully that her molecules dissolved so she could pass through walls and reconstitute herself on the other side. All the grade sixers thought that was a reasonable explanation. And they're like, oh, cool, okay. <laughs> Love that. Um, then sometime later, you know, as guest teachers do, they receive thank you notes from the class, right? Teacher says, okay, let's all write a thank you. And uh, so she receives these, these notes in time <laughs> and this boy dear sylvia thank you for coming to visit our class i enjoyed everything you said but i'm still thinking about that woman who concentrated so hard she could walk through walls and i've been wondering what if she got distracted in the middle of walking through the wall would she get stuck in the wall forever <laughs> yours truly robert Oh, Robert, I love this kid. He's an adult now, I'm sure. Isn't that great? He's, you could tell it's just been hugging him. Oh my gosh, what if she got distracted and got stuck in the wall forever? And as Sylvia goes on in this teaching, don't we, don't we just, don't we just get distracted and get stuck in walls? <laughs> exactly. This is what happens. How frequently we get stuck in walls, walls of desire, walls of aversion, walls of delusion, walls of anger, of resentment, revenge, etc. Walls that feel so solid and so painful in their impact on us. And then Sylvia says, only when I remember that the walls are habits of my own mind <laughs> that I built. And they will continue to exist as long as I insist that they're real and as long as I keep building them. Then my mind relaxes and I see clearly and I can walk through the walls that are empty, walk right through them. This is clear seeing to see what am I building? What am I reinforcing? Is it true? Is this something that is um, being built and fabricated? So the practice is not about never getting trapped. It's not about never getting stuck because we're all getting stuck in walls sometimes but it's about recognizing when we're stuck when we're trapped and about choosing about paying attention and about the determination to do it and to continue it's said in the teachings that the Buddha's last words, dying words, last words, were strive on with diligence. Wow. That's, 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 wow. Last words. That says a lot. So this means just beginning again, just this next step. What's this next step? What's this, like it said in the beginning about uh, Adi, meaning a movement towards what's this next just putting the foot on the ground um okay last word to mark nunberg a beautiful dharma teacher yes i love this so with relation to determination could be moving in a skillful direction or unskillful he asks, what does the heart love enough to invoke resolve? So if we're feeling a lack of resolve, a lack of determination, maybe that's a helpful inquiry. What does the heart love enough? Do I love myself enough? Do I love these other beings enough? Do I love and appreciate calm and wisdom enough to sit down and practice? 
Do I love this earth enough to be really careful in my consumption, etc.? What do we love enough that will invoke resolve, aditana, determination? Hmm. Let's practice. Okay. So, adjusting your posture. Hmm. Setting aside distractions as part of this resolve. Setting yourself in a posture that is wakeful and as at ease or relaxed as possible. Taking time to just settle, let all those words just float through, float by. What's meant to resonate or will, 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 will land. And just meet this self in this present moment, this body, heart, mind. Dropping fully into the body here as much as possible, as much as available right now. giving kind attention or softness or space to any tensions that are here. Seeing if they can just find some degree of ease or softening or letting go. And as that happens, we might feel a little more weightedness, groundedness, presence. Feel the actual contact with the support that you're on. Allow yourself to receive the energy of that support of the ground. And then take some time to reflect on or recall your values how you want to be in the world, in relationship to yourself, in relationship to others, to the earth, to all beings. Our intentions to refrain from harm through our speech, through our actions, through our greed.
our intentions for wisdom, compassion, And feel these as determinations, not just not just a, a wish or a whim, but actual energy that that fuels this feeling of determination or even tenacity. This is how I want to grow, how I want to be in the world. And over and over, over and over and over, I will begin again. And we can practice this by gently turning our attention to the sensation of this breath that's arising and passing right now. And just for this period of practice, we bring in our resolve, we cultivate this quality I'm going to really attend to this breath and each breath. This very plain, ordinary breath. Train the mind to feel the full experience of this breath that's coming right now. The full length of the inhale and exhale. The sensation of this breath beginning and ending. the direct present moment experience. This takes determination to sustain some interest in each breath. So that after a few more minutes of silence, when the mind decides that's a little boring and would rather delight with some fantasy or planning or remembering or revenge or whatever it wants to conjure up, we bring in our determination, not right now. Right now, I'm going to feel this breath and we begin again.
Turn up the dial of curiosity and energy. Strengthen the mind and begin again. Notice if you get stuck in a wall. And you can walk right through the wall by seeing it clearly. Oh, got stuck. And it dissolves and we walk through. Begin again. And in these last few minutes of the practice, you might choose to recall, 
to draw up, to remember. your direct experiences of wise intention, action, resolve, freedom, the times of peace, the times of liberation, of letting go, the times of wise action and wise speech, self-care, compassion. And really feel it in the body, what that feels like as you recall. And remember, this is possible for you, for all of us. Seeing clearly, choosing wisely, and loving fully are human possibilities. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken. Awaken. I will not squander my life. Thank you for your practice. Mm.
And I believe in you. <laughs> Hopefully you can uh, call up and recall that it's possible for all of us. And um, we continue step by step, a movement towards what is skillful, what is wholesome, what is onward leading. Thank you for your practice.